Hi, my name is Scott Davis, CTO for End User Computing at VMworld. Uh, I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about a problem that's evident when you're using tablets in order to access Windows applications. Both our VMware's View technology as well as our uh, tech preview that we showed around uh, App Blast deliver uh, Windows desktops and Windows applications to a tablet device with rich fidelity and graphics. But that's only half the problem. The other side of the problem of delivering Windows applications is a mismatch in user interface capabilities. In other words, when you're trying to do an application that was designed for a point-and-click interface with Windows, and you're trying to give a rich native experience on a tablet, that's a mismatch. I use tablets because I want to use native gestures. I like being able to grow and shrink with two fingers. I'm using various swipe gestures on the device. I don't really use my finger is too large to be a precision pointer device on the interface. And pull-down menus that you see in the Windows interface really don't map all that well to a tablet. So VM, at VMware, we tried to tackle this head-on in the EUCCTO office. I'm here today with Daniel Beveridge, uh, the lead architect behind uh, this technology that we call user interface virtualization. This is a true virtualization technology where we are adding a level of abstraction. We are not modifying Windows apps or desktops, but we are transforming the user interface from the uh, remote Windows application into a native experience on the tablet and we can do a whole bunch of uh, customizations and modifications to give a rich user experience. So Daniel, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, this this technology and how it you know uh, how you came up with the idea what we're trying to accomplish. Sure Scott well certainly many uh, many users echo our frustration with trying to use remote Windows applications on a tablet. And that we thought, you know, there has to be a better way to do this. Instead of just bringing the display protocol forward, we want to do something that's more native, more tablet friendly. So we've been able to transform many of the key elements that users have to interact with in Windows, transform them into a rich tablet friendly UI, and actually give users a navigation experience that's very pleasing on a tablet. Great. So let's take a look at what this looks like in practice. Sure. So let's take a look at what this approach to user interface virtualization, this patent pending technique in order to transform the desktop looks like in practice. What are we seeing here, Daniel? Well, it basically seeing the user log in uh, to, the, to the view client on a tablet, accessing a remote desktop. You're going to notice right away there's some differences. We've got a shortcut tray in the lower right corner that allows users to navigate through many capabilities. Now what you're looking at is a user accessing their remote files, but actually being able to browse and navigate through them locally on the tablet. Very low latency response time gives users the ability to quickly scroll through and access my documents. It's kind of intuitive, native to the tablet. Absolutely, it's using the common look and feel they're used to. Now, users can uh, focus on a specific application here, and they'll no actually notice if they want to access the menus. The menus come locally to the tablet. See on the lower, on the upper left there, you see the menus from Notepad, but they're presented in big fonts, easy to access and easy to touch. Great. Now, this is not just a new skin on Windows. This is actually inter this is really virtualizing all aspects of the user interface of the application, correct? Absolutely. We're fundamentally transforming the way users are interacting with the remote application. Instead of just conceding to the point-and-click interface, we're creating a local tablet interface Great. For, for key functions. So, now how about start menu access and scrolling between tasks. How can we do that? Sure. Well, instead of fumbling around at the traditional start menu, what we've done is transformed the key elements users interact with. The recent documents, content from the desktop, and even the traditional application start menu, all into this very nice, swipeable, tablet-friendly UI. Give users a much more native user experience. You can launch the apps or documents directly with a large icon, and it causes them to spawn in the remote session. This is almost making your remote Windows desktop look like a native uh, page on the tablet. Yeah, I mean the goal is to use the point and click interface as least as possible. Use it when you need to, but bring more of the navigation forward onto the native device, onto the tablet. Yeah, double poke is not too much fun on a uh, tablet, is it? No, absolutely. <laughs> you, want, you want to give users an experience that's consistent with what they're typically doing on a tablet. So another tedious challenge on, on a tablet is selection of tasks that are running multiple tasks in a Windows desktop. We've been able to tr transform this into an easy album cover flow style of navigation, complete as you can see with actually live thumbnails that update 
and actually the ability to, to quickly swipe and choose it, it's much more pleasant experience, much more consistent with what people are used to from applications like iTunes. Yeah, an alt tab on a, a virtual keyboard on a tablet is no fun. That's a great innovation. Yeah, absolutely. This is just this is just lots of fun to, to navigate this way. Makes you want to run a whole bunch of applications at once just so you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> great, Daniel. So what are we seeing here? So uh, right now we're, no we're noticing that sometimes uh, the thumbnails get updated when you minimize and maximize the application. If it doesn't have a live thumbnail, it'll put an icon of the app. So now let's look at another, another key capability, which is native text uh, manipulation, clipboard functionality on a tablet. Sure, this is one of the most difficult and challenging things to do from a remote window session on a tablet. We've been able to use uh, user interface techniques to provide a native text selection experience. And this is just night and day compared to using a remote pointer to try to, to select text. What we're actually showing here is the ability not only to select text with an, uh, native widgets, but also to transfer the contents of the remote clipboard down to the tablet and even into local tablet side applications. Oh, so I can do cut and paste either between native apps and remote apps all using the native tablet gestures? That's right. It sounds like magic, but it's, it's <laughs> actually a fantastic innovation here. Wow, that's, this is really uh, great. So here we see uh, the contents being transferred into Evernote, but the contents originated in a Windows app in the remote session. Wow, this is great. This really makes the, uh, the tablet like an extension of your Windows desktop. Exactly. We're using tablets for what tablets are good for and, and trying not to impose the point and click experience on our users unless it's, it's absolutely necessary. Great. Thanks, Daniel. Great stuff. Thank you, Scott.